welcome everyone to the Electric Coaches channel. And I'm back with another video after the Capital City Clash, which was held back in April 1 of this year. You know, uh, we had a great time that, that, uh, at that tournament. And just this past, uh, I believe it was May 13th, the uh, Bama Blast was held in uh, Tennessee. Um, I didn't make that tournament. So what I've been doing here at Electric Coach Studios, I've uh, been doing my usual, you know, tweaking bases, customizing figures, you know, running plays with my figures, right? But I also was, uh, I took the time to uh, take inventory of my approach to tweaking and figure customization. Because sometimes, you know, when, when you tweak bases, you get into a routine. Or when you, you know, you customize figures, you get into a routine of doing, you know, of, of uh, tweaking the base or customizing the figure. And about maybe 10 figures in, 10 bases in, you realize all your stuff looking the same. Your base is running the same, right? So I took a pause for a moment to reevaluate how I'm going about, you know, uh, my techniques of configuring my teams regarding the bases and uh, customizing figures. So I have uh, some new bases here from ITZ. These are the uh, Formula 24 bases. I, I bought like three packs of these bases. And this is uh, one of the bases here. I just, I just took it out of the pack. You know, so I'm gonna start tweaking these Formula 24 bases with a different approach, all right? You know, and, and the, the last figure I customized was this uh, Ezekiel Elliott pose right here which I had shown on Facebook and I had done a previous video on this figure a while ago. Um, but I don't want to bore you with the details of base tweaking and figure customization. This video is going to be about it's going to be about coaches gambling. No, not gambling with money. I know what some of y'all was thinking. No, no, no. Because people ask me all the time, you know, people outside the hobby, like, do you guys, like, play for money? I digress for a moment. But I tell them, no, we don't. Play for a trophy. When I say gambling, I'm talking about taking risk, huge risk, on the electric football board. And one of those risks is guys are staying on the switch too long. Okay, they running the board like this. Like that. And bad things are happening. So when I was at the Capital City Clash, I noticed that. A lot of guys was riding that switch for a long time. Taking huge risk. I'm going to show you a play in full speed, right? And then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to put the play on the Telestrator and we're going to slow the play down. And I'm going to discuss with you my thoughts on what, you know, a particular coach or coach is should have done in regards to how long they stayed on the switch. Okay? So, here's the play now. Run it. Let you look at it. And then we're going to come back. I'll be right back. Video. I ain't got a problem with it. Yo, they don't want nobody to know, you know their strategy, right? <laughs> we just play, we just play. We gotta have a fun every day. We go pass game. That's a sack. <laughs> Did you hit him? Yeah. <laughs> huge play, huge play. Okay, I'm back. You've just seen the play run in full speed. You saw the quarterback get sacked as a result of the offensive coach running the board too long. Now I'm going to slow down the play and show you where the coach could have 
avoided being sacked and possibly have gotten some yards out of this play. All right. So then when we look at the formation, we see a two tight end set single back offense. And the defense is in a cover one. It appears that all defenders have an offensive player set up to block. So when you look at the outside linebacker here and outside linebacker here, both tight ends are, are covering those edges. Because a lot of times, as I said before in the previous video, a lot of your blitz is going to come from the outside. Okay? So, this formation alone, what it appears to be, it appears this formation has given the offensive coach a false sense of security. You see? So, before he even turned the board on, he's thinking he's got everybody blocked. He doesn't have to worry about pressure right now. Which is why he probably kept the board on longer than what he should have. Okay? So we're going to move the play a little bit forward. And we're going to take a look. There's the start of the switch. And it looks like nobody's near the quarterback. The quarterback has got a clean pocket, if you will. Or he's far enough back away from the defense where he can avoid being sacked, okay? So we're going to move the ball forward a little bit more. Now here comes the pressure. This is the defender that sacked the quarterback, all right? The offensive coach could have stopped the board there. Why? Let's clear our screen. He has his running back coming out of the backfield right here. Now, some of you outside the hobby, you'll say, well, if he throws to that guy, the defenders here and here can make a play on the ball. They can't. Why? Because the rule set in the TOC states that any defender who is engaged with a, against an offensive player via their basis, that defender cannot be pivoted toward the ball carrier. So if the coach has stopped the board right here at that moment, he could have dumped the football off right there. And usually a lot of times in electric football, those kinds of throws are the easiest throws to make. It's short and there's no defender between the quarterback and receiver, right? He could have gotten yards out of that, okay? But we're not done, we're not done. Let's see if he wanted to keep the board running a little bit longer. Just a touch longer, watch this. He could have stopped the board there again. Let's see if he didn't want to stop the board to throw to the running back here. Okay? He has his tight end right there. You see that? He could have avoided that sack. And this tight end has, has plenty of room to run for at least the first down. The first down marker is right here about at the 42-yard uh, line. All right? So he could have... He could have stopped the board. He had two opportunities to stop the board to make a play. But instead, he stays on the switch and he gets sacked. You see that? Now, some of you may be asking, well, you probably didn't see the tight end, right? Well, let's run, let's run it back. Let's start from the beginning. All right. Here's our, here's our pre-snap formation. All right. Tight end is right here. All right. His running back that was open was there at pre snap formation, right? 
I want you to watch how the tight end, you know, you know, squeaks out, how he chips the how he chips the block, and he gets out. He chips this this outside linebacker here. Okay. Clear our ink. Let's move the play forward. Okay, there's tight end. It appears he's blocked. It appears he's in the scrum. And look how he breaks out. Wide open. And as a matter of fact, in the TOC, when you complete a pass to a receiver, which would have been this guy in this case, you can pivot the receiver in the direction you want him to go, which in this case would be probably this way. All right? And this safety, the defensive coach would have adjusted that safety and possibly this safety down here. Those two guys would have been left with making a play on the ball from the tight end right here. You see? So the offensive coach, from the initial, from, from pre-snap read, he was confident that he had everybody blocked. He was confident that he had everybody blocked from his initial formation, resulting in keeping the board on too long and at the same time not seeing the tight end and the running back open. So this is a lesson to anybody out there in the hobby or even outside the hobby. If you're thinking about coming into the hobby, you have to factor in your switch discipline. You don't just turn the board on and just and hope that things go right. You got to turn the board on, you got to watch the board, and you have to know when to get off the switch. In real football, if a quarterback holds the ball too long, eventually a defender is going to get to him. You have to apply that concept to the hobby of electric football. So I hope this video was informative and I hope you enjoyed watching and listening. Uh, this is the hobby of electric football and this is some of the things that we electric football coaches go through. Some of the things that we have to consider if we want to continue, if, if we want to compete in tournament play and be competitive, can't stay on the switch too long. I'm Mo. Thanks for watching.